The following program is a special presentation of BaseNet Intermedia. Hi, I'm Jessica Moskowitz with BaseNet Intermedia in San Francisco, California, and today I have the pleasure of bringing you an interview with Mad Magazine's maddest writer, the Giz Wiz himself, Mr. Dick DiBartolo. Through the modern marvel of internet video conferencing, Dick and I had a chance to talk via his studio 3,000 miles away in New York City. Dick and I talked about his recent milestone with Mad Magazine, his daily netcast and lifelong love of gadgets, his game show writing days, including how he saved the show, the match game, and Dick and I got a little personal as he shared some of his personal stories, hobbies, interests, pet projects, and even a few quirky facts I think some of Dick's biggest fans might not even know about him. For more information or to add comments or feedback, you can visit us online at basenetintermedia.com for all of our social networking handles, or you can email us directly at info at basenetintermedia.com. So without further ado, enjoy the interview. Hi, Dick. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. Oh, you're welcome. This is very exciting. Yeah, thanks for joining us and taking the time to talk with us here at BaseNet Intermedia. Uh, so I'm just going to jump right in and ask you a few questions here uh, that I've come up with. Uh, and my first question is, so we want to get to know the man behind the madness a little bit better. So can you tell me where it all began? And by me, by it, I'm referring to your professional endeavors, your career. I mean, all the way back to grade school. Have you always been interested in writing? Yes. Uh, when I was in school, I was dreadful at languages. I was dreadful at a lot of subjects, but I loved to write. So I always found that no one wanted to like edit the school newspaper. Uh, no one wanted to sit around and write stories for the newspaper. So I used to do that. Uh, in high school, uh, I ran the audio visual department and I used to run the uh, school auditorium program. Oh. As a matter of fact, in, in high school, I was a big hero because uh, I was given a book of passes in which I could excuse kids from class oh, nice. if, if I needed them for a high school play or something. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I've, since the get-go, I, I love to write. And when I was a kid, instead of doing sports, um, I was down the basement, and I used to call it RDB, Richard D. Bartolo Studios. <laughs> and I had microphones and, you know, just a fake uh, radio station. I used to broadcast for myself. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah, so I've always been interested. Wow, okay. So um, so you're probably most well known for uh, for being a contributor for Mad Magazine. You're mad, known as Mad Magazine's maddest writer. Um, and so my question is, are you still contributing to Mad Magazine? And yes. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I just set a new record for Mad. My picture was in, uh, I think it was the June issue for having been in 400 consecutive issues. Wow. Uh, I know. <laughs> uh, and since we're writing ahead, I'm now, I just sold my 403rd piece uh, for, for, uh, for Mad Magazine. Oh, my and, God. Uh, yeah, I started back in high school, mm -hmm. and I was reading Mad, and after about the fourth issue, I was going... I don't want to read this. I want to write this. It, it just it just spoke to me. So I, I bought a book on um, how to sell stuff to magazines. And I remember saying that you should buy a book, which was uh, the Writer's Year book, which I bought. And because some magazines will not accept anything unless it comes through an agent. But fortunately, Mad said uh, they'll read anything from anybody. Um, but just send a self-addressed stamped envelope because we get a lot of uh, submissions. And if we don't like it, we'll throw it out unless you uh, give us an envelope. And then six weeks later, my own envelope came back and I was really depressed. And I thought, oh, later, in the, I threw it in the desk drawer and I thought later in the day, maybe there'd be a note that would say it was closed, so try again. And I, I opened the envelope and, and the envelope was stuffed with cardboard. And, and it said on the cardboard, ha, 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 
thought these were your scripts coming back. Um, we bought one of them, and stapled to this card, but is a check for a hundred dollars. Oh my goodness! I know, I know. And would you please call us because we would like to talk to you about writing uh, some more stuff. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And so, so you were you were in high school at that point? I was in high school, and so I I wrote pieces, uh, and sometimes they would sell, sometimes they wouldn't. Um, and then I, I never mind working at night or weekends. And, and so a couple of times they said, oh, you know, can you rewrite something over the weekend? And, and I said, oh, absolutely. And then one day uh, Bill Gaines, the uh, founder and publisher back then, said, you know, you mm -hmm. always jump in and help us. Do you want anything from us? And I said, I just want to be in every issue. And they said, oh, that would be great for us. Yeah, you just keep writing. You'll be in every issue. And uh -huh. there you go. Almost 40 years. So, wow, that's great. That's yeah. great. Uh, tell me about your most memorable experience working for Mad Magazine. There's got to be something that's really stuck out in your memory. You know what? It, it, it has to do, it is probably the most exciting day in my life, thanks to William M. Gaines, the, the man I mentioned earlier, who was the publisher of Mad, who mm -hmm. knew I loved uh, trains. And uh, one day he, he called me in his office and he said, write down this date. And uh, that's all I'm going to tell you. You'll keep that whole day free. I said, okay. And he said, I'm telling you, I'm inviting 12 people and you're one of them. So the day came uh, a couple days before he said, okay, uh, Saturday, go to Grand Central Station and uh, I'll meet you there at 8 a.m. So I go there and the other mad guys he invited are there. And we hear the announcement that the Metro line is going to Boston uh, on track 12. Bill says, go down to track 12. Do not get on the train. <laughs> what in the world? So anyway, we're, I am really bewildered. And I hear a train whistle. And out of the tunnel comes a little diesel engine pushing a totally restored 1890s observation car. Wow. With three waiters in their hats and white hanging off the observation <laughs> platform. And Bill says, this is a surprise. They're hooking this up to the Metroliner. We're going to Boston with a champagne brunch. Then you guys are going to roam around Boston. So I'm going to stay on the car. They're going to put it on the siding. <laughs> and you'll have four hours in Boston. And they're going to hook it up to the 7 p.m. Metroliner home. And we're going to have another incredible sit-down dinner with every conceivable kind of wine. So that, was, <laughs> uh, you know, and it was the old-fashioned car with the mm -hmm. open observation deck. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I it, it was just, it was just the most amazing day ever. Uh, I mean, That's his so generosity, great. it was great. It was great. Oh, so they were, they were also a great team to work with then, too. Yes, yeah. Gaines was, was super. I went all over the world thanks to him. He had a bonus plan that you didn't get paid. They were republishing material endlessly, <laughs> put it in specials, put it in books. But he would keep track of how many times he reused your articles. And if you used more, reused 25 pages or so of your material within a year, you went on a free vacation. He took wow, Hong, nice Hong Kong, Africa, Russia, Italy, Paris, all on his dime. It was great. That was great. Those are great perks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk to your boy. Tell him. Tell him. <laughs> I guess Tell I him. will. <laughs> Um, so, so my next question is, um, you've done so many interesting things, Dick. I mean, as evidenced by the way our conversation is going here, I didn't know about the, your interest in trains and, and whatnot either. So um, my question is, you had quite uh, a stint going on here simultaneously. I don't know if it was going on at the same time, um, but you were also game show writing, writing for game shows. Yes. So how did you how did you fall into that? Well, you know, it was very funny. I started while in high school. I got an after school job with a TV company called Barry Enright. And I was the office boy. And a guy who worked for Barry Enright, Bob Noah, left and went uh, to a company called uh, Mark Goodson, Bill Todman Productions. Very, mm -hmm. very famous uh, house for uh, producing game shows. And uh, I was always writing crazy things. And he called me up one day and he said, listen, they, they have a new show called The Match Game. And they're looking for a writer. Let, come on over and I'll explain it to you. 
So he did, uh, and it was. Have you ever seen the match game? Yes, yeah, okay, I have. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, the match game started out that they were just uh, what, what were called straight questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Name a flower that's red. A president. Name a president who appears on money. Uh, name uh, an animal that uh, comes from an egg. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I wrote them. I wrote them for um, nine months. And mm -hmm. then Goodson called me in and he said, Dick, it's a, it's a one-year contract. And uh, NBC's not picked it up. So it, it, it'll be on, you have six more weeks of taping shows, but then it's over. And I said, okay. Um, so over the weekend, I thought, you know, maybe it's a crazier, maybe, maybe I should put on my Mad Magazine hat and think about this. So I went in on Monday and I said, Mark, how about instead of these, uh, name a flower that's yellow, how about we do silly questions like, Mary liked to pour gravy on John's blank. And so Goodson <laughs> laughed as you laughed. And, and he, said, yeah. he said, well, what will they say? I said, well, they'll laugh. And then they'll say, you know, mashed potatoes, meatloaf. Mm -hmm. And Goodson said, well, you know, it's canceled. And they can't cancel it twice. So, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so just write whatever you feel like. So I started writing those kind of questions. And within a few weeks, it could have been a month, Mark called me in again. He said, Dick, the ratings are going up so much that NBC is going to go for another year. So he said, keep writing those questions. Um, That's so, great. And, and it, I ended up being uh, at Goodson Todman for uh, almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. So you saved the show. <laughs> I saved the show. I, I never got a percentage of it, but I did give myself 20 years of employment. So that was good. <laughs> That's great. Um, so, Dick, one of one of the other hats that you wear is uh, is this background you have with technology. You're known uh, for for being a technology guru. You do a daily podcast, netcast, with uh, Leo Laporte, who I mentioned before, who's a renowned technology journalist. Um, and on the show, the Daily Gizwiz. Um, you sort of talk about, uh, or you feature a gadget every day, usually not something mainstream, something maybe a little more unusual or defunct. Um, where did this, where did this love for gadgets come from? You how did you, how did you? Well, you know, it started with, you know, back in school, as I was saying, I had my radio studio downstairs, so I was always buying the latest uh, recording equipment. And I, I had speakers everywhere, so I learned about amplifiers and wiring. Mm -hmm. I, I just love gadgets. And, and I owe this to someone at Goodson Todman, uh, Barbara Griff, her name was, who was mm -hmm. working on To Tell the Truth, which is a show uh, I worked on for a while. And she left mm -hmm. uh, Mark Goodson uh, Productions, uh, back then it was Mark Goodson, Bill Todman, went over to our local uh, Channel 5 here. Um, which is now Fox, and, and she did a, a show called Saturday Morning Live where they had a pet person did a segment, the cooking lady did a segment, the home handyman did a segment, and she said, you know, we have guests on the show. You have all those crazy gadgets in your office. Would you, would you come on the show and, and just show the gadgets? And I said, oh, yeah, yeah. So I did. Uh, I'd never been on TV before, and I showed stuff. And she said, you know, you can be crazy. She said, the only thing is you have to impart information, but we don't care if you make up, you know, make up jokes with the host <laughs> or whatever. Um, and I did that, and, and a week later she called me. She said, you know, we got a lot of mail on that. People must love gadgets. You have more? And I said, Barbara, do I have? Uh, <laughs> and then she said, you want to come on uh, every week? And I said, absolutely. And from that, uh, someone from uh, Live with Regis and Kathy Lee called, and I did not mm -hmm. have an exclusive contract, so I started uh, doing uh, Regis, and then mm -hmm. on to Good Morning America. Uh, so it it just kept going. So is it true that you have a, a storage warehouse somewhere in Manhattan with all these gadgets it is, that you've collected over it the is years? True. I live in a two and a half room apartment. Uh, uh -huh. And then I have another apartment in the same building with a commercial lease, which we call Disneyland. Uh, thanks to some listeners, I wanted to <laughs> Leo. Leo's uh, studio is called the Twit Cottage. Twit being this week in technology, and yep. I wanted something trick for my place. And and hundreds of people sent in stuff, but Disneyland uh, just just struck me as being so funny. Yeah, so I, I my studio is Disneyland, where I am now. I have trains. Uh, I have tons of stuff 
and I have a room in a warehouse because I hated to throw out old gadgets. Yeah. And, and then one day, Leo Laporte from uh, we had met on uh, back at on, on Tech TV, and mm-hmm. he was doing. He he said, Dick, I'm going to start a channel just for the internet. Uh, I do a week. I do weekly podcasts. I do monthly podcasts. I don't do a daily podcast. Are you interested? And I said, absolutely. I said, just as long as you understand, my 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 thrust is not the PlayStation, not the iPhones that everybody's covering. I like to uncover mm-hmm. the slightly offbeat gadgets. And he said, oh, that's great. And then I said, you know what? I want to thought, Leo. I have a warehouse full of old gadgets technology of the past so i was thinking one day a week i would just talk about old technology he said let's do that too the great thing about the daily gives wisdom leo is pretty much anything goes you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there was nowhere he just called up and he said uh all right let's do it and i said do we have a name and he goes oh we're gonna do it every day you're the giz Wiz. how about the daily gives Wiz? okay <laughs> how long is it uh when we get tired of talking it ends okay <laughs> So it's been great. And now we're in the year five. So, Wow, congratulations. Yeah, I know, I know. So five years. So, so then my next question is what, what is, and I'm sure you've gotten this question before, uh, but what is the strangest gadget or, or even maybe your favorite? I, I actually prefer your favorite gadget that you featured on the Daily oh, Gizwiz. Hands down, it's Slingbox. Now, do you, Slingbox? So do you, I don't know what that you, is. You will need to know about Slingbox. I, I Okay. <laughs> a fair amount, and when you get into a lot of cities, hotels block out a lot of the stations. You know, they they have nine channels devoted to all their own stuff and all the sports channels. They block out all the movie channels because they want you to watch their movies, their pay per view. Mm-hmm. So th- this is what Slingbox is. Uh, it's a box. It it's about a. I, I, about a hundred dollars and you hook it up to the back of your cable box at home and then it plugs into your Wi-Fi then you download software on your laptop and the software is free once you buy the box and then anywhere you go where you can get online you hit find my sling box and Hmm. up on your computer comes the video from your cable box at home. Wow. You can watch all, so when I go on the road, you know, I'm on Channel 7 on World News Now, so I watch all my favorite newscasters wherever I am. I watch all my old movies that I've recorded. I have Slingbox, Hmm. I have a little 22-foot boat. I have Slingbox on my boat um, so that I can watch movies on my little, uh, tiny little netbook. Uh, so that's my favorite oh. gadget. I've used it. It came out probably seven or eight years ago. I use it many times a week. Wow. That's great. I'm going to have to look yeah, into that. Yeah, and now they have <laughs> sling box for cell phones. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's cool. cool. <laughs> so what, uh, what, what was the strangest defunct product that you've ever, or gadget that you've ever had on the air? Like, for example, I'm thinking the other day you had... Um, you featured that Orbitz oh, I, I soda. Have, I think it was a clearly Canadian yes, product. Yes, I have <laughs> it sitting here because it is so bizarre. Oh, there it is. There it, it is. is. <laughs> it is. It is. And I did a little research, and it was voted one of the ten worst beverage ideas ever. And the and it was a, a not soda, but a drink that had mm-hmm. gel balls gelatin like balls floating in it and the soda would be one flavor and the gelatin balls were a contrasting flavor well i tell you when the pr agency they sent me two bottles i opened one to try it it was really dreadful Uh, and i put one right in the gadget warehouse because i thought this this is instant death uh, and uh, I think I think they might have gotten a year out of it. I, I got a few emails after we did that Gadget Warehouse Friday that they had to buy it also just to uh, taste it. But it was wildly expensive and really dreadful tasting. So, That's yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> Um, okay, so Dick, on a, on a little bit more of a personal note, so you mentioned uh, that you were using that gadget on your boat. 
And so I've read that you're an avid boater, and you've even you even have a monthly column that you've been writing for uh, Power Boat Magazine for quite a long time. So um, I'm curious: is it true you have a boat on the Hudson, uh, and do you have an office in your boat, or what's uh, the Okay, the well boat? the. <laughs> uh, several things. One is uh, uh, kind of interesting is that I have never owned a car in my life. I was oh. born in Brooklyn and I moved to Manhattan and that's been my entire life. Pretty much two locations. Uh, so my entire moving career has been, cro has been crossing the Brooklyn Bridge. But I <laughs> love, I, I live a block from the Hudson River. And when I moved into the city, I was walking my dog, and the marina is three blocks from here. And I said, one day when I'm big, I'm going to have a boat. And I go, wait a minute, I have a job. I am big. I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy a boat. Uh, so I, I bought a boat. And uh, like Mad Magazine, I, 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 I bought a very fast boat. Not mm -hmm. by choice, but every time I went to, I said, I'll have this engine. The guy said, ah, that engine's too small. Well, I'll have this engine. Uh, that engine's too new. What do you want? Problems? You don't want that. All right, I'll have the next biggest engine. <laughs> that engine's not coming in for six months. What do you have? <laughs> uh, and I got so... write them a letter. I said, hey, I work for MAD. I, I got a job writing to them. I'm writing to you. Mm -hmm. uh, you need a columnist? And the, the, they didn't call back, unlike MAD. And I finally called them and got the editor and explained who I was. And the man said, listen, I know who you are. And I have your letter. I'd love wow. for you to work for me. He said, but we pay $50. I said, I'll take $50. Uh, <laughs> so he said, oh, well, okay, you got a monthly column. So that started. And that also just passed 40 years this past uh, February. Very so, cool. Yeah. Uh, and, and for a while, I had a 50-foot houseboat <gasps> in the Hudson River. And that was my office. Oh. Uh, yeah, I know. You know, if you go to a couple of things, if you go to uh, on the web, on, if you go to YouTube, uh -huh. my, my channel is Mad Maddest, M A D. Maddest, M-A-D-D-E-S-T. Okay. And it, you'll see, you can look for fail, Farewell, Gizwiz Farewell to the Houseboat. <laughs> it, it just became too expensive. Oh. But it was not a regular houseboat. It had a, a complete operating disco inside with dancing waters and fog machines and all the mad parties were held there. Um, so you can get to see what it looked like the day um, it left. Oh, so it was a party boat too, not just it, your office. It was an office, <laughs> was an office slash party boat. Slash party boat. <laughs> uh, I, now I have a little twenty-two foot boat in the Hudson River. Oh, that's great. That's great. Do you take it up the Hudson very uh, often? I do. I do. Not not as much as I used to because of the price of gas, but yeah. uh, I do try to get out and ride around, even halfway up to the bridge or down. I went down river the other day to see the. The world's newest, biggest ship that where they were going to shoot the fireworks, have the uh, commentary for the Fourth of July fireworks. I went down to see that, the epic. Oh, very yeah. nice. Yeah, I get out. <laughs> All right. So uh, before we wrap things up here, Dick, I want to just ask one one more question. Sure. Sort of a a, um, a personal question as well. Um, but so you've probably done a lot of interviews. I know that you've spoken a lot about yourself and and whatnot, but. Could you tell us one little tidbit of trivia that, that most people typically would not know about you? I mean, besides your real age. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you know what? I have not, since Bill Gaines died in 1992, I have never, nor do I ever want to, go on vacation. I... It's, it's, it's actually it's a wonderful thing to be able to say I love to do so much that for me going to a trade show and I go to like the hardware show and I go to the pet show and I go to the consumer electronics show if I mm -hmm. and I go to a lot of boat shows so my entire vacation if there is one would be staying one day past the trade show and Aww. I would say you know this city also, oh, this city also has a railroad museum. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have a book called, you know, a book of every city that has railroad museums. So if yeah. I know I'm going to a trade show, 
I see if there's a railroad museum within a uh, distance that I can get to. I don't, I don't drive uh, with public transportation. And so that's it. I, I never go on vacation. And, uh, and I never, st- <laughs> one other thing, I don't stay at people's homes. Ooh, that's interesting. I, I, my what? brother and his wife have asked me uh, forever. And I ended up staying, I've stayed at once in the 30 years they've been married. I, I'm a late night person. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I get an idea at five in the morning, I want to be able to run to the computer. So uh, I don't want to be in a house where anything I do will be disruptive. And the only reason I stayed at my brother's house is he says, okay, listen, you can't say no to this. <laughs> we have an apartment above our house that we rented for years and we decided we're going to keep it for ourselves because our last tenant moved out. If you'll spend the night here, you can have your own apartment, your own cable <laughs> box, your own computer, your own phone. I said, all right, I'm coming for one day. All right, that you can handle. Yeah, that I can handle. <laughs> so then, then obviously you never stayed in a college dorm or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, no, well, n- no, I never did. But I mean, I'm talking these days. Yeah, these uh, days. I, you know, people, oh, <laughs> come out for the weekend. Well, no. No, I don't want to come out for the weekend. <laughs> I want to be able to, I need all my toys. I, I guess that's what it mm-hmm. is, too, is, mm-hmm. you know, I, I have, I'm looking here. One, two, three, four, five. I have seven computers right here. I have three TV. I have stuff. I have tons of stuff. Okay. So you really are the, the giz whiz. I, <laughs> <laughs> all right all right well thanks so much for uh taking the time to talk with me tonight dick and uh i just want to make sure uh people know how to find you they can go to gizwiz.biz gizwiz.biz there's a contact thing there if you need to email me uh there's everything we talk about on the daily gizwiz the daily gizwiz starting a month ago is now also a video podcast so you can click on uh, under every gadget. There is now a link that says see or hear this podcast. And uh, it's all there. Great. All right. Thanks so much, Dick. You have a great night. Thanks, Jessica. That was super.